All right, there you two. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we got old red pulled in the shop here. So last night I was out in Montana and the transmission in this thing started making all kinds of awful noises. Uh, I made it to where I had to get unloaded and the truck made it, oh, probably almost 300 miles back to the yard here. But yeah, that train is not sounding happy, which I'm really not happy about because it's a Basically a new tranny that shouldn't be having trouble already. Uh, all the gears still exist. They all still work, but it is Something's not happy inside of that thing. So I Am kind of under the gun to get this fixed. I got loads. I need to get moved yada yada So I'm not sure how detailed this video is gonna be but I am gonna try to include a video on it Even though I am in a hurry and I need to get this done So last night when it started making oil I went around and I checked everything that I could think to check. I checked the leveling valve, checked all that, and everything was fine. I did check the oil level. Did I put that on there? So I did check the oil level, and you can see a little bit ran out. One thing I had noticed, though, is there is some metal filings on the magnet on the fill plug here so i wiped them off i'm curious to see if they're back uh, it doesn't look quite as bad now but it doesn't have some of the bigger stuff that was on there but you can see it's it's right there full it's kind of foamy this thing was just running but yeah this oil's got it looks somewhat clean but it's got a funky smell to it trying to see how much of that's air bubbles and how much of its glitter looks like there's Good bit of glitter in there but anyway but anyway that's not ideal so next thing let's uh go ahead and drain the oil out of this and see what the hell falls out but anyway i got a clean bucket underneath here so we can have a look see at what we find and go from there yeah. Yeah, pieces like that are ever good to find. I pulled the side box off, got the exhaust out of the way here, and I just dropped the PTO off. And if there was any question about whether it was actually the tranny or not, I think uh, I think that answers that question. That input gear is. Uh, Looking quite unhappy there. Not really sure the cause or what's going on here yet, but there's definitely a missing gear tooth, and then they're all chewed up around there, and that's the input gear. So definitely got some uh, issues going on in here. Still got to get the drive line pulled off, get everything disconnected, and unbolt this thing before I'm ready to drop it out. A couple of hours later here, I think I got everything disconnected. Drive lines off, trans coolers off, air lines for the shifters, the shift towers off. I got all the bell housing bolts out except for two. And we got the tranny jack strapped underneath it. So hopefully I've got this balanced pretty close. And we're zipped those last two 
bell housing bolts out and try to get this sucker out of here. All right, so it's out of there. So we got it out here. Still a couple little things to do. We gotta take the input shaft off, take the cross shaft off, grab airline fittings out of it. We gotta pull the rear yoke off. And uh, it's about all we can do here right now. And then uh, we we'll have to wait till Monday morning, see if we can go grab a reman or what and uh, go from there all right so this probably looks a little shinier than it did just a few minutes ago that's because this is not the same transmission i ran it over to the reman shop there they took a look at it first thing they asked me after uh looking at what went wrong in the transmission was well how much horsepower are you running my answer was a couple so anyway, long story short, they think that the cause of failure on this transmission was exceeding the torque rating of the RTLO 18918B, and for those that don't know, RTLO is the low inertia Eaton Fuller transmission. The 20, the first two numbers are your torque rating, that's your series, and that's how many gears. And then this is your ratio sets. But so the 18918 is a 1850 torque rated transmission. You can see here this is a 20. So that's a 2050 foot pound torque rated transmission. And because the failure was on the input gear, they think that that was the cause. And old red here does make a good bit of steam and is probably over 1850 foot pounds of torque so because i don't want to be back here in another 200,000 miles this thing was just out of the warranty period on miles uh you know i don't know 10 15,000 over and it was almost a year out of the two-year warranty so there was no warranty on this 
Uh, they did help me out a little bit on the price of this unit, but this was still quite expensive, and this is a lot of work. So, anyway, I think I've pretty much got this thing prepped to go in. We got our, you know, stuff like the reverse sensor, the output yoke, got our cross shafts, and all that stuff in here, and I think we're just about ready to shove this thing in the truck. On the clutch here, I do believe, if I remember right, I put a 2050 rated clutch in here. This clutch only has 200,000 miles. I would generally recommend if you got the tranny out for any reason, just go ahead and replace it. However, I think I have adjusted this clutch one time since it was put in. And so that means that it has next to no wear on it. And so we're just going to roll with it. Now, if you guys remember when I installed this tranny, I had a bit of trouble getting the input shaft shoved in there and lined up. It took me several stabs to finally get it in. There was some of you guys suggested to take the clutch off of the flywheel, stack it on the input shaft, and then shove it in and bolt the clutch up through the inspection hole and that does sound like a really good idea however because i'm not touching this clutch at this time i'm gonna try to just stab it in if it fights me i might give that a try but anyway i think it's time to get that transmission rolled under here and start trying to shove it in here So I actually got that slid in first shot, so that is a bonus. All right, so really didn't record much. Got it shoved in, got everything hooked up, put the PTO back on. I've got previous videos on how to do all of this stuff, so I mean, whatever. Sometimes it's more important to get the task done than to make a video, unfortunately. But it's all in here, it's all done. I just filled it with oil. We're gonna test run the truck. As long as all that seems good, then uh, all we got to do is put the exhaust back on, put the side box back on, and we're out of here. So, test run went good, other than this one hose, I had to twist on it pretty good to get it to reach its new port location there, and now it's seeping out the side a little bit, so I gotta get a hose made, swap that out. Started putting the rest of this stuff together, putting the exhaust on, and my dang muffler. Okay, as I was saying before, my air compressor rudely interrupted me. My muffler now runs straight into the oil filter that's on the new 2050 torque transmission that wasn't on the 1850. So, I guess I'm going to just have to straight pipe this thing again for now. Which, unfortunately, this clamp, clamp kept vibrating loose. So I ended up sticking some weld on there to keep that from vibrating loose. And now i got to cut that off. So, that's a lot of fun. All right, so we got exhaust scab together. I don't like it. We're probably going to revisit that probably, hopefully, before too long because straight pipes are cool for all of about five minutes when you're running a truck every day. So, yeah. But that's together here now. I still got to change this hose, which I can't get made till in the morning. If I had the right 
screw on ends. I've got the holes I could make on, but I don't. So that's going to be a morning thing. I've got oil started draining here now because I still got to do an oil change on this. It's like 8.30 p.m. here right now, and I do need to be out on the road in the morning. So I guess we'll go ahead and uh, keep an eye on that oil. But while we're doing that, we'll start getting this step box back on. And there we go. Probably would have been helpful if I would have emptied this box out before I took it off. So it's a couple weeks later here now. I'd really like to say everything's been flawless on this truck since we replaced the transmission. However, that's not the case. Everything on our transmission's working flawlessly. Of course, everything on the old transmission was working flawlessly right up until it wasn't. So, you know, it is what it is. I'm kind of bummed out that transmission went out. Hopefully the wind's not too noisy for you here, but I'm pretty bummed out about that. It was just out of warranty, so there was no warranty on it. They did kind of try to help me out a little bit on the price of the upgrade. However, there's still an additional $1,000 core difference between the 1850 torque transmission and the 2050 torque transmission. Uh, they, I think they knocked 500 bucks off the price of the transmission. So I think all together, parts and supplies and oil and all that I ended up being about 22 2300 or I'm sorry I wish it was 22 but 8200 to 8300 dollars on everything I replaced a U joint and a couple other little things while things were apart but transmission's been working well however I think two days after I replaced the transmission my air compressor decided to explode on me again. Some of you guys might know it did the same thing about a year ago. And unfortunately, I was out in the middle of nowhere when this happened, like middle of middle of nowhere. Uh, no cell service, no nothing. Uh, luckily, I was only a couple miles from the farm that I was supposed to be delivering at when it went out. And the farmer was able to help me out quite a bit. His girlfriend was in the nearest town that had truck parts an hour and a half away at the time babysitting her grandkids so that worked out uh, we were able to get a hold of the parts dealer up there and they had a compressor so I had one brought out to me later that night you know 10 o'clock at night or something like that uh, she got back with my air compressor I was able to nose this thing into a little shop that he had to get out of the wind and have some light and stuff Got it thrown back together and uh, rolled out of there about midnight. So that was a ton of fun. Then everything for the rest of that week went smooth and then I blew out an airbag on the trailer here last week. So that was fun. Not the end of the world. I pulled the airline off, kinked it off and uh, ran probably longer than I should have liked that and got that swapped out this weekend while I was at home. Other than that, I don't think there's uh, too much to note here. Everything's uh, so far seeming to be working pretty good. And hopefully, knock on wood.
that's it for the problems for a little while and uh i'll try to get this video uploaded here fairly quick i do have several videos even back from this winter that are sitting on a hard drive that i need to get edited and uploaded so those will probably be sprinkled out throughout the summer here so if you see uh a video in august or something there's snow on the ground uh, that's just because i am way far behind on editing videos and there's some videos from this winter that uh, I still need to get edited and uploaded. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe down below. Thank you. Have a great day.